Hi everyone and welcome to the conversion of the Morley Vector 02. This follows on from my previous video. Now before we begin, I have carefully written out some points that you should consider um, if you were thinking about doing this. So if you tamper with your controller, you will invalidate the generous long warranty. If you open your controller, you may be able to come into contact with mains voltage or a fully charged capacitor discharge unit. If you carry out any modification, you may damage your controller and won't be able to send it back for free repair. If you are not familiar with the electronic terms I use, cannot recognise and correctly orientate components, then you really should not attempt this modification. You accept that this video is offered for information and entertainment only, and that I make no claim or warranty to you. Further, you agree that I am not encouraging you to carry out any alterations to your controllers. After the modification, there will be a very slight reduction in top speed of your locos. So, with that all said, in my last video we compared the Vector 02 with the Gauge Master Model D, and we saw how the Gauge Master was far superior at providing slow speed control. Well, that's because it is a closed loop control circuit, and um, it is generally accepted that if you have too much smoothing, you will lose low speed control. However, smoothing is also helpful in protecting more delicate motors and coreless motors. But this modification will allow the Vector 02 to have just as good slow control as well as the protection and noise reduction for coreless and delicate motors. Now by noise, if you remember, we heard some of the motors buzzing slightly when they first started up. Now then, you're going to require some tools to carry out this modification. You're going to need a controlled, temperature controlled soldering iron. You're going to need a solder sucker or desoldering braid. Now, these are quite cheaply available and what they do is suck off the solder once you melt it. You're also going to need a small security hex bit. I don't know if you can see that. And this is used to undo the transistor retainers on the front of the case and panel. Now I found a suitable one, I've put a link in the information box to this video, but they're known as T10Hs and available from Black Spur at, uh, in a kit of, of about 10 I think they come, uh, so that'll set you up for the future. You'll also need a 5.5mm spanner or nut spinner and four 100 microfarad, and this is the key value, 100 microfarad 35 volt matched capacitors. Now, when I say matched, it's because they have a 20% tolerance and in order for the channels to be balanced, we need to make sure the value of each capacitor is as close to, as possible, or each pair of capacitors anyway. And to do that, you will need a multimeter that can read capacitance. Now, as you can see, I've been experimenting using the um, oscilloscope with various different types of capacitor or different values to find out what to replace the original 1000 microfarads with. And I've landed on the 100 microfarad because it is right in the middle of the sweet spot. If you recall from the previous video, we saw how the motor uh, draws a certain amount of current. And when it draws this current, the capacitor is either able to keep a steady straight DC line, or you start to see a ripple come in. And we know that some motors need this ripple to work smoothly and to turn over nice and slowly. Whereas others, uh, which draw very little current, and this is the key thing, because they draw such little current, the capacitor is able to provide a perfectly smooth DC supply for them. And 100 microfarad, which is a big step down from 1000, I'm sure you'll agree, was found to be exactly the right compromise, testing it over a range of about five different motors. And that's from Triang up to the Porter Scap and cordless motors we're now seeing from DJ models and things. So, to help you, if you wanted to uh, order these capacitors yourself, they're quite cheap, I think it's about 57p for 10, which I advise you to get, so that you can balance them out. They came from Rapid Electronics, and their order number is 113525. And uh, as I say, they're 100 microfarad, 35 volt, rated at 105 centigrade, for 2000 hours. Now the controller should never get that hot, it's well over boiling point. So what it does mean is they'll last a really good long time. So what I'm going to do now is start measuring the capacitors to find a matched pair. So if for example you see this one, 
hopefully when the meter wakes up we got 100.399.9 put them to one side and just measure this one just wait for it to wake up again and it will decide what it's worth see that's actually 98.3 so that's quite low and, and we just carry on until we find one which is of a similar value to what we've had, making sure that your fingers don't come into contact with both leads at any one time. See, that's 101, so that's higher than the first one we tested. This is boring, so I'm gonna find them and then come back and tell you what's happened. So after a little bit of checking, I have um, two pairs of matched capacitors. They're all very closely rated the same, so they'll be ideal because you need to keep the balance in the controller because each channel um, needs to do very similar and also between the controller if you were doing crossovers and you set them at a similar sort of speed you want the speeds to be the same and the capacitors do have an influence on them on the speed output so obvious things but please disconnect your controller from the mains before you begin and make sure that the capacitor discharge unit indicated by the little yellow light there is fully discharged you can begin by pulling off the knobs and they just pull off like that just a push fit being careful not to scratch the panel loosen off the retaining nuts on each of the control knobs and you'll find a shake proof washer under each keep everything in a little container one side. You now need to remove the four crosshead screws from the corners of the control panel. Using a small flat bladed screwdriver gently pull down towards the center of the plastic case and slip the screwdriver underneath. You can then lever up and then the panel will drop forward. We can now slide it open and gain access to all the components that we need. It's a good idea to place a piece of bubble wrap just in the controller body overlapping the front edge to keep everything from being scratched. Now we need to identify the capacitors that we're going to change. The capacitors are marked as C3 and C4 and C9 and C10 over this side. This is the 12 volt um, uncontrolled rail and this is the capacitor and transistor for the capacitor discharge unit. So it's a very well made elegant machine inside. Carefully mark the negatives of the capacitors on the PCB board. So it's done it here and if I can get the light to shine through you can see where I've done it there. Uh, capacitors are marked on their negatives. So if the camera will come into focus, there you can see that the negative is clearly marked and it'll be the shorter of the two legs. In order to gain access to the PCB, we need to undo and re remove the fixings for the four power transistors. Now this is a point where you really must use a great deal of caution. The transistors are mounted on the front metal panel and this is used as a heat sink. However, they must be insulated from each other and you will notice that they all sit on a little rubber pad. And all equally important is that there is a plastic washer between the, the washer, metal washer and the bolt which stops the bolt coming into contact with any part of the transistor fixing point. This is the point where you need your 5.5 millimeter spanner to hold this firm and the security hex driver for the front panel of the controller. And then carefully undo the nut. The nut is a shape proof fitting. And as I say, we have a metal washer and then the special plastic bush 
it's like a little top hat, I suspect you can see it. So that pokes down inside the transistor and stops the bolt uh, coming into contact with the transistor itself. So you see me undo one, so I'm going to do all four and then come back. Now that the bolts are removed from all transistors, this is just a reminder, because this is quite important. Um, the order in which they go back, you have the special plastic bush with a little bit pacing down that goes inside the heat sink of the transistor, the metal washer and then the shake proof uh, nut on the back. If you store them in this order in your special side pot, that will help you to remember because that is quite important. Now we're not quite ready to move the PCB, we have clips on the backs of the LEDs and using a flat bladed screwdriver again you can just ease these up and push them back over the legs of the LED like so. The LEDs will then push through from the outside. Okay we are now finally ready to uh, lift. So if you just push the LEDs from the other side you'll notice the board pops up. Carefully make sure the transistors come away from their little pads like that and we can now lift back the circuit board so that we can get at the areas that we want to. Now take a, a moment to notice please the rubber pads again. We must make sure before reassembling that there is nothing on these that could possibly scratch uh, and cut through the pads. So I'll, I'll brush on standby to give them a going over and the same for the backs of the transistors. Also be careful that while you're working not to bend any of the wires otherwise things won't go back as intended. So just carefully locate the connections for the capacitors and these ones are smaller actually because I previously removed the thousand microfarad ones um, here they are um, whilst I was doing my tests and experiments but we still need to remove them so the instruction is exactly the same. Um, notice that the LED clips can also come off so perhaps it's best to put them in your pot to one side as well. So being careful not to bend anything or damage those all important pads we've located the areas to unsolder and these are these four connections here. So I'm going to use a solder sucker, some people prefer to use desoldering braid. For those who don't know, tin the bit of your soldering iron. And this is literally a pump. So you're going to reflow the solder and suck it away. And you can see it leaves a nice clean hole. Be careful not to burn the control knob that's to your right or it might be to your left depending on how you're working. And then just to check, make sure that the capacitors are indeed loose. Don't force it out. If, it need, if you need to reflow it just to make it loose, do so because we don't want to damage the track or the pads. Now the capacitors are removed. This is a point which does generate sharp bits that could go onto the transistors. So employ the toothbrush and give it a bit of a blow to make sure that it's not going to cause any trouble. So now we can fit the new capacitors. So bearing in mind we must remember which is negative and which is positive. It's easily marked. The pitch, that's the distance between the pins of these capacitors, is much larger. So we are going to need to bend one of the leads over to make a nice solid fit. So I've chosen to bend the positive lead, um, which is just the longest one. And now you see it will fit in there nicely. And then just keep your finger on it, whilst you go back on the PCB side and just flex it over. That'll hold it in position. Fit the other capacitor noticing that you're going to also have to bend that one and that it will be the other way around with the negative on the opposite side. And now turn over. So using a heat on your soldering iron that is as low as you can get it to reliably melt the solder, first solder in one of the legs on each capacitor. Then, putting your finger on that capacitor, press it whilst reflowing that joint. This will now ensure the capacitor is seated firmly down, and you can now solder the other leg. Okay. 
same for this one and now all we need to do is clip the legs away so holding the leg cut close to the solder joint and take away we don't want it flying off and going into the controller if like me you're clumsy and you break one of the little landing pads uh, probably because I was trying to video and do the job then what you have to do using a very sharp knife is scrape away the green insulation over the track and bend the leg over and solder it to the track then check continuity it's not going to get a lot of strain uh, where it's positioned so that works not particularly elegant wish it hadn't happened but never mind it does happen these things so I'm now going to desolder the other two capacitors when they were originally inserted uh, they were a little enthusiastic about folding them over so we've got to be a bit careful um, when we try to remove these it's going to take a little bit more solder sucking and uh, careful helping out with the finger on the back so I'm not going to show you all that because it's quite boring so our other two capacitors originals have now been removed so all it remains to do now is to add the new ones that we've selected to the board with the same fold over so I'll show you it once it's all finished so just taking the camera off the tripod for a minute we now have that channel's capacitors changed and this channel's capacitors changed and underneath we've done a nice neat job there and a nasty bodge there but, uh, as I say it will still work but it's not quite as elegant as I would have liked so now we must reassemble but again I'm going to just remind you please make sure that there is nothing on these pads that could possibly once you bolt the transistors down pierce the pad so yep. we're now at the reassembly stage um, so offer the control pot knobs through their respective holes remember to put on the little black plastic clips that go on the back of the LEDs and I would recommend that you start with the LEDs by assisting them into their um, mountings but keeping your finger on the other side of the panel and then just clip them in you will need to just press down on them a little bit and then they should slide home once that's done rear push the cl clamp back over the top don't intend to show you all that it's fairly simple and I'm sure so you'll now we come to reassembling the all-important insulating washer and bolt make sure the transistors are seated on their pads quite correctly and insert the little uh, insulating washer feed the bolt through from the other side making sure that the insulating washer is seated seated in the transistor correctly place the metal washer over the bolt and then finally the nut now when you do these up they've got to be firm but not tight because again we don't want to pierce that um, rubber pad that the transistor sits on so I'm going to do that off camera because it's a bit of a fiddle but I'm sure you've got the idea so with the transistors, transistors correctly positioned make sure they are all straight have a final check to make sure that the little bush is mounted inside the heat sink of Inks transistor and that everything is firmly in place. Check all your wires, make sure they're not going to be trapped when you put the panel back in place and make sure nothing has been bent whilst you've been working on it. And then we can treat ourselves to just admiring how nicely made the Morley controller is. It's two separate transformers to power the two channels individually and as I say a rather nicely designed board with lots of protection uh, built in. Now, hopefully we won't be looking at this ever again because we're now going to reassemble the controller and start our tests. Okay I've not put the screws back in all the knobs um, and we'll set the controls to their central position. I have connected up one of the channels on the back there you can see the chop lock in there select DC voltage on our multimeter so plug your controller back in and very quickly just switch it on and observe the yellow light 
so that comes on no problem at all observe that if you advance the control positions the LEDs respond that means everything's looking good now we're looking at track one first I think it is remember the voltmeter is auto ranging it's in millivolts that's nothing to worry about and gradually advance so there we got we have two volts and it gradually goes up now we're up to 12 so 16.96 similar to what we had before and round the other way 16.989796 so that's the advantage of the matched capacitors that I was talking to you about if they weren't matched you get different voltages on each side so I'm just doing track 2 or channel 2 as I call it and all seems okay there you're looking for nice controlled variable speed there there we go the oscilloscope's powered up and we'll just uh, advance the correct channel that we're using and as you can see we have a DC way a line there going up but there is now if you look at the top there you can just begin to see let's zoom in on the oscilloscope You can now see a bit of ripple which we wouldn't have had before and the same the other way but it is clearly still being smoothed right so we have the Morley back connected to the track just here and we have the Batman 5600 which was one of the test locos there and this is the control knob if you remember we couldn't crawl Well, looks like we can now. It's also completely silent. So now it's the turn of the little sentinel. It's not quite the amazing tick over from the gauge master, but it's perfectly adequate. Just out of interest, let's have a look at the waveform if we can, which we're getting with this. Now you can see straight away that the 100 hertz ripple is there, although it's not a, a complete sinusoidal wave it is being supported by the capacitor so you see this edge the right hand edge is actually smooth as it drops down and so now we have a loco fitted with a porter scat cordless motor this is the reason to keep some smoothing in the system let's see how she does We spoke about the ripple and how much motors draw so let's have a look at the waveform and as you can see very little ripple because the motor draws so little current but it's got a little bit so there we are that is a conversion to a Morley Vector 02 with 100 microfarad capacitors instead of the original thousand producing far better controllability Hope this has been of interest.